studies together, and this is where this data comes from uh, that Dan mentioned. And the key point is that the ejaculatory dysfunction, or what they termed in fact an ejaculation, so dry ejaculation, came out at 10.8%. So it was slightly lower in any patients that had no cautery whatsoever, and slightly higher when they used significant amounts of cautery, but averaged out at 10.8%. And across all those studies, using recognized questionnaires, there was no impact at all upon the shim scores using IIAF15. So that's the kind of data that patients care about uh, and what makes um, approbation, or puts approbation and its unique selling point as compared to the other uh, receptive and um, capitating options. Um, as you mentioned, there's been a lot that's happened over this last decade, not least in terms of hemostasis, which of course has been the talk of the town over uh, this period of time. And we've seen an evolution, uh, basically adopting and accepting that we had to go in there and apply some degree of heat to give predictable and reliable hemostasis. Although during Ampermortu, we're using various uh, techniques to try and tamponade because it's venous bleeding from the back of the neck, which was the source of the problem. Uh, if you were good at it and you're experienced, and that would work pretty reliably, but people learning it got into a lot of trouble. Uh, and Italy was a good example of that, and they essentially gave up in the first round because they just had so much, uh, so many problems on this front. But if you were experienced, you, you could get away with it. But that wasn't really then uh, a solution that would be fit for purpose once all the green lights from regulatory point of view came along and we're looking for you know, rapid and large volume adoption. So in came the concept of the focal bladder neck cautery, uh, and basically year on year, uh, we've seen a drop in the estimated uh, rate of blood transfusion, 